Good afternoon, everyone. I can see everyone is hungry. Huh? So I'm here to talk not about my profession. I'm, talk, I'm, I'm here to talk about my compassion. And the compassion is to develop the first smart village in the country. We have been hearing a lot about smart cities these days. And I come from a village which is 100 kilometers south of Nagpur, which was started as a model village way back in 1951. And today we are reached a tipping point, as Mr. Khurana said, to convert this or transform this into the first smart village. So when I was a, when I was a child, uh, this is about 25 years back, when I was in my second grade, our drawing teacher once asked us, can you visualize an Indian village? My drawing skills are not so good, but I had drawn something similar to what you see on the screen. Rustic roads, cows roaming around, people wearing dhotis, women carrying earthen pots on their heads, and that's it, it's nothing else. Now when I talk to children and most of my friends, I don't see a huge difference in what they visualize of Indian village. It's the same story. If you go back in time, the year is 1951. There was a gentleman who was a lawyer by profession. He had a flourishing law business. And he arrived at a tipping point across a patient who had sunken eyes, sunken nose, crippled fingers. And he was so afraid at the just sight of this person that he ran away. He came back. He decided that he would offload his career and actually jump into the social bandwagon and started working on developing a village, which he aptly called as Anandwan, or Forest of Joy. He approached the government, and the government gave him a land, which you see on the photographs, which was an outcast land. He, with six leprosy patients, a lame cow, and just 14 rupees in his pocket, and his two children and a wife, decided to convert this outcast land into perhaps the best village in the country. It was a difficult task. The only thing that he had with him was a strong determination, which he aptly said that it's a common man's uncommon determination. He had a land army with crippled soldiers, and he wanted to transform this village into a village which would become a joy for not only the people staying there, but for the whole world. What you see today is literally a village which is called as Anandwan, which has perhaps the best comforts that man can think of. Here, quality is not defined in terms of how much he earns. It is defined in how he lives. So he said that I want to build a village wherein people who at one point of time hate to live would actually hate to leave this village. And this is what you see in front of you. And who are the people who built this village? So they are not people like you and me who had the engineering degrees and MBAs and doctors and architects. These are the people who were thrown out of their societies. They had only two options, either to commit suicide or become a beggar. And many of them chose the easier option that was of committing suicide. Someone told them, it's better that you go to this ashram, which is called as Anandwan. Perhaps you will find hope. And they came here in a hope to find something good for them. So these are the people who have the architects, the engineers, the doctors of Anandwan, who have made Anandwan the way it is. Now I would like to portray the macro picture of India. India is basically a country which resides in villages. Unlike this whole smart city concept which is going to be talked about, most of the people in India stay in villages. In terms of percentages, close to 70% people stay in villages. There are about 600 villages, 600,000 villages. One third of them are extremely backward, which means even the rudimentary infrastructure is not available. Toilets, roads, forget about the hospitals and employment opportunities. The important point here is that more than half of the population villages less than 30 years old. So it's all young people, you know, young people like you and me who want to do something good for themselves. And they have lost, no one cares about them. They don't know how to improve their life because they, have, they lack the tools and the techniques. And that is the reason why you see a widespread migration happening from villages towards cities. 
This is a map which has been drawn based on the 2011 census by the government of India. And you can see that people from most of the Bimaru states, which is Bihar, Rajasthan, UP, are traveling all to big cities like Pune, Bombay, Delhi. And the influx is so large that in the last five years, the region of Bundelkhand has seen close to six lakh people migrating towards cities of Delhi and then Mumbai. And these people are so poor that just to buy a ticket worth 100 rupees, you have to take a loan from a private landlord. Just imagine the situation. So what is, what is causing this whole pull and push, as academics call it? So there's a pull because a lot of people feel that there's a good life in the cities. They can earn more. They can enjoy the latest concepts of metros and, and skyscrapers and good restaurants and all. And there's a push theory because there's nothing to do in the village. You know, Bundelkhand is one region wherein the last thing one would do is do farming. There's nothing to be done. There's nothing, there's no hope. So most of these people have flocked to the cities. What is left is only senior citizens. So if you go to a village in Bid, which is in Maharashtra, all you'll find is people in the age group of 65 and above because no one below that age wants to stay in that village. Everyone has moved to the cities. Can you ever make a smart city if there's such widespread migration? We believe more than the smart cities, you have slum cities. You go across the nook and corner of the city, Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, all you'll see is filth. Be it the roads, be it the beaches, be it the dwellings wherein people are barely able to stand, or be it the railway stations. It's so difficult to live here but people are still flocking to the cities. However, there is some hope which is coming from the government because of the, the work which has been supported by various international organizations like the UN to develop small villages. And some of it we can see in examples on the slide. Akodara is a small village near Ahmedabad, which has a population of roughly about 1,200 people. And this has been adopted by ICICI Bank to become the first digital village in the country. When the demonetization happened in November 2016, these villages were actually quite unnerved because none of them was using money to do any of the transactions with the village. There's Hivre Bazaar in Maharashtra, which has done excellent work in the field of water management. They've got a lot of awards on this. And then there is Dharnai in Bihar, wherein corporates have come together to set up a decentralized solar farm, which can provide electricity because in the last 65 years of India's independence, there's no electricity which has reached there. However, what is not missing in this development is this is all development along one axis. So be it Akodara, which has developed something very good on the IT front, it doesn't talk about any of the other development indices. Be it Hivre Bazaar, which talks of just water, but no, no news on other thing, or be it Dharnai. Where Anandam stands apart is, it has always been following a holistic development plan, which means that it has believed that to improve the quality of life, you have to do a big bang. You have to work across the multiple uh, axes of human development. And that's why we thought that why not make a SMART idea. So for us, SMART is not a prefix, it's an acronym, which literally means start with things which are sustainable, that are measurable, that are affordable, replicable, and of course, use of technology for all these things. And then we started preparing a master plan for Anand One, which you see on the slide here. The idea is to transform Anand One into a smart village. Now, how do we do that? A lot of things we have already done. For example, we started thinking that these are the five verticals that you would like to work on. So there's infrastructure, there's healthcare, there's education, employment, and environment. And you have to do a big bang. You have to really start working on all these levels. And here you can take the use of information technology or domain-specific knowledge and human resource development. Because it is better to train the people locally using locally available material than really copy-pasting someone from cities into, into villages and vice versa. So we started working on these ideas. And what you see is, on the healthcare front, Anand today has got two full-fledged hospitals, 75-bedded hospital, where a lot of, lot of surgeries are done. A lot of diagnostic camps are conducted. And the idea here is on preventive care. We don't believe in giving medicine. We believe in how can we ensure that the person doesn't fall sick. And for that, 
We are, we are working on day and night to prepare, come out with technologies which can be low cost, can be afforded with the villages. On the education, the whole umbrella of education is available in Anandwan. We like to call it from cradle to coffin. So we have crash. There are three colleges. There's agriculture polytechnique. There's school for special children. They are special because even if they can't hear and see, they can do things which are much better than perhaps all of us here. And there's a computer school for the blind people. When our Prime Minister, Honorable Modi, came out with the concept of Make in India, this was in the year 2014, we had a small smile. We said, Anand was self-sufficient way back in 1983. Everything that is required, which I call as the reasonable rational needs of life, are made in Anand even till this date. So none of the residents of Anand has to go out, whether it is footwear, whether it is clothes, whether it is the dressing which the patients require, or the furniture, or even for that matter, even basic necessities like oil. In fact, a lot of people say that the only thing that Anand required in 1985, which was imported from outside, was perhaps salt and sugar, because everything else was made in Anand And apart from the raw material that goes into it, there's a lot of passion also which is there, which you will see if you visit Anand On the infrastructure front, we have been making our own toilets. I proudly say that Anandwan is perhaps the only village in the country which has a toilet for everyone. No one defecates in the open. And all these toilets are connected using a chamber which is producing gas, which is fed back into the kitchens. So you take care of your poop. We have been using plastic and rubbers to make check dams to ensure that there's enough water reservoirs and these reservoirs are up and running throughout the year to irrigate our farms and for potable drinking. On the agriculture front, Aranwan, because of its geography, is not close to any of the river. The groundwater is about 350 feet. Still, we have been able to preserve water because for the small window of rainfall, there are about 10 reservoirs built in Aranwan. All these are man-made reservoirs. And this ensures that there's enough water for everyone residing in the village. Till date, not a single tanker has visited unknown from outside. This is ample amount of food grains produced. All this is consumed in house. This is all we call as partnership farming. We have our own dairy, which is producing about 1,000 liters of milk every day. And this milk is so good in quality that it is sold at a price of 60 rupees a liter, which is close to a dollar. There are doctors in the, in the, in the vicinity who recommend mothers to buy milk from Anandwan if they are falling short of milk. It's so pure. Anand has been doing a lot of youth sensitization programs. The first program was started in 1968, which was called as the Shama Sanskar Shavni. And the idea was to teach the youth the value of labor. Many times we forget about the labor who brings the morning newspaper to us, the milk to our doorsteps, or to the farmer who brings food, cultivates food for us. And our founder, Baba Amte, who was also an international uh, social worker, and a Maxis Award winner, believe that it's important that the value of labor is taught when, when people are young. So he started this camp in 68, 67, wherein children would be made to work in the fields right from morning till afternoon. And the evening, there will be lectures being given by some of the noted social activists at that time. And this program is still a huge hit among all the youngsters. It's a seven-day program wherein people come from all walks of the country, irrespective of the caste, creed, irrespective of their standard social status in the, in the, in the society, and they, they work like a laborer. We have our own skill building program in the field of construction, because this is one of the areas which is one of the primary source of employment, but highly unskilled, because we believe that it's important that you train people to make good infrastructure. And all these are villagers who learn these skills and go back to the villages and become entrepreneurs. None of them has gone to the city. We have been doing skill building programs for the visually impaired, for the deaf and mute school uh, children. And they have been learning basics of tailoring, basics of uh, uh, elect electronics, you know, you're repairing. And they go back and become, start their own shops. In the recent times, because of the energy crisis, which was looming large, and the price of fuel was going up, Anand embarked on a journey of trying to find an alternate means to, to 
meet its energy requirement. And about four years back, there was a huge splurge in the prices of the cylinder, the LPG prices. That's when we came out with this concept of a huge biogas plant, which is coupled to a, a dish, reflected dish, and this hybrid system is producing enough energy to fuel the kitchen of Ananwan, where in 2,500 people have their food. Apart from that, we have been taking afforestation measures. I don't know, millions of trees have been planted in the last decades. There have been check tanks built using rubber and plastic. And all this is done by people who stay in Anandwan. There's no one coming from outside. So what next? Our roadmap is to showcase what good work Anandwan has done before the other villages. For that, we believe that Anand can become a right R&D, an incubator, which we call as the Rural Innovation Incubation Center. So anyone like you from any part of the country can come to Anandwan and actually innovate and experiment what you think is good for the people. If some of this is good, he can actually learn or train change agents from other villages who can take it back and start transforming their villages. And in the end, we hope that the blueprint that Arundhan has developed can be used by governments, not only within the country, but even outside, to really transform the villages. Thank you.